And this video continues the discussion of neutron stars. So you should listen to the neutron star video before this, but let's talk about uh, what these are. And I'm actually going to start this with uh, some sounds here. So we'll see if we can make this uh, operate. This is supposed to be a link to uh, a little audio here of a neutron star. So see if we can uh, get some audio going here of a strange sound. Again, these sounds were first detected in 1967. And that location in the sky has been basically making that same sound since 1967. Um, so radio telescope and listening to a source in the sky of uh, this energy. So that's not the one I want. So got another one here of uh, again radio telescopes listening to radio energy being beamed to us uh, in a sense but uh, received by us from uh, several different locations in our galaxy. So I need to check to see if I'm still recording. And, uh, looks like that uh, we might still be recording. So that's good. I hope you heard those. Uh, hold those. Heard those sounds. I'll play another one here. But radio telescopes detecting energy pulses of energy and let's go ahead and uh, talk about what we're uh, what we're listening to here so back to our our slides here sounds from space and there's a good explanation uh, you can find these that if you do a google search for Jodrell uh, bank it's a radio telescope installation in in the united kingdom um, so pulsars radio astronomy um, developed in the 1930s of course optical astronomy dates back to Galileo in 1609 but uh, radio astronomy detecting uh, sources in our universe uh, gets started in the 1930s by 1960s big radio dishes were being built and radio astronomers were able to probe further away uh, in our uh, in our galaxy and now to other galaxies but we have uh, this detection, 1967, of this pulses. I have beep, beep, beep here. It just depends on what kind of uh, speaker you, you hook things up to. And faster than once per second. So quite a bit of searching was done to see if there was some uh, Earth-based interference to the radio telescope, some radio transmitter, some car engine nearby that was... Uh, uh, sending out its own little radio signal from the engine, the electricity in the engine. Uh, satellites in space um, were checked out. Nothing was found that was man-made that created this signal. So a little bit of humor here. Uh, some people identified this signal as from an LGM. Little Green Men. LGM. Little Green Men. But it turns out that it wasn't too long there was a scientific explanation for this. So these were called pulsars because we get pulses of radio uh, energy here. 
pulsating radio stars, pulsars. Over a thousand of these are known now. It's, they're not uncommon. Uh, I ask you a question. If we consider stars, we'll get back to the pulsars in just a second. What do you think it's easier for a star to do? Expand and contract a hundred times a second, send out a little burst of energy as it expands, or spin a hundred times a second? It's much easier to spin a hundred times a second, and that is going to provide the explanation for these pulses of uh, radio energy. So a neutron star is forming as the type 2 supernova process goes underway and the core collapses. If the explosion is not too violent, then this neutron star can survive. The core of the uh, what used to be the star it gets pressed in and uh, the iron, all the other elements get pressed in. Gravity changes. Instead of having elements, we have neutrons in the object that's left behind. So it's not hydrogen, it's not helium, it's not carbon, it's not iron, it's a neutron star. As this small size occurs, you know, getting down to 12 miles across from what the uh, size of the star was initially, much bigger than the Sun, we're talking about stars that are eight solar masses or larger. So it's collapsed down to this small size from much larger than the Sun. Two things, a couple of things happen. When things get closer to their center, they spin faster. This is conservation of angular momentum. You've seen this used for ice skaters. As they pull their arms in, they spin faster. Or a gymnast uh, doing a, a dismount off of the piece of apparatus. If they tuck in their body, they spin faster. Divers um, going into a pool, and if they want to do a, many rotations, they'll pull their mass towards the axis of rotation of their body. So conservation of angular momentum. Another thing that happens is we know that stars have magnetic fields. That's been well mapped on the Sun. And it's also been identified in other stars. Stars regularly have magnetic fields. As the star collapses, the magnetic field gets compressed. It pulls in as well and becomes much stronger, much more intense. The magnetic poles of, of objects are not aligned with the rotation axis in general. Uh, that's the case of the Earth, that's the case of the Sun, it's the case of Jupiter, Uranus, Neptune, etc., uh, etc. Et uh, the magnetic poles are not aligned with the rotation axis. So we have a strong magnetic field, and in the region of this neutron star, it's very hot. There are separated particles that are above the neutron star and they have a force on them from the magnetic field and they are accelerated along the magnetic field line as they accelerate they emit light and light of various wavelengths radio visible so forth you have to imagine you know put a, a pencil in your hand off axis for the magnetic field and then kind of wiggle it around and you would be simulating this rotating neutron star and out the direction of the pencil energy is being beamed across the galaxy so it forms something like a lighthouse it's not a horizontal sweeping around but it's a a, a tilted beam it's somewhat like a lighthouse in that the energy is uh, directed in a certain certain way and this allows us actually to see the, the pulsar, see the energy. If the light uh, went out in a sphere in all directions, it would become very diluted as it uh, travels a great distance to us. But because it's in a beam, it's more concentrated, and we can pick up that energy at the Earth. So imagine a lighthouse beam sweeping around, those lights sweeping around. Every time the light comes to your eye, that's the same thing as the pulse of energy from the pulsar being detected by the radio telescope. So here's a little video in the visible spectrum of the pulsar in the uh, Crab Nebula in Taurus. And the pictures were taken and stitched together into a movie. There are, are two pulses here. There's a, a brighter pulse where more energy, and then there's a smaller amplitude pulse where there's less bright but this is the pulsar 
in the Crab Nebula. The supernova that exploded in 1054 AD, I, I think this is like 33 times a second, so this has been slowed down, but about 33 times a second a pulse of energy comes towards the Earth from this pulsar. Here's a photograph again with the visible light for the pulsar being uh, shown here inside the very turbulent uh, uh, material that we have from the explosion. And here we have x-rays being detected in the Crab Nebula pulsar. Um, so we've got x-rays, we've got some optical light being shown here. But there is this energetic source in the middle of the Crab Nebula, this pulsar that's sending out energy and sending out a beam of light, radio energy and light, that uh, can be detected at the Earth. There are other pulsars that have been detected, neutron stars, and they tend to occur inside the supernova remnant. Now there are some very old ones where the supernova remnant material has dispersed and is not detectable, but uh, you know, right in there we've got the, uh, the neutron star inside that uh, supernova remnant, Cassiopeia A. So supernova explodes, material moves out, and we've got this rotating neutron star. You can see the beams in this drawing. This is not actual photography, but the artist's view of uh, this rotating neutron star uh, after the uh, supernova has exploded. It's very compact, uh, dense object strong magnetic field and energy being beamed from the poles of this magnetic field and you have to imagine this object rotating you know once a second 30 times a second you know 3000 times a second there are various speeds for the the neutron stars so what do you think would happen to the speed of rotation over time for a neutron star the energy that's being sent out, the source of that energy is basically the rotation energy of the star. So energy is leaving the star, that energy comes from the rotation of the object, and the pulsars slow down over time. That's one, uh, one option. An isolated neutron star, it'll slow down over time. However, if this neutron star happens to be in a binary star system, and its companion uh, swells up to the giant phase and sends fresh material onto the neutron star, that infalling material can actually speed up the uh, neutron star and, and get it to spin a you know, thousand times a second. So this object has over two times the mass of the Sun spinning you know, towards, maybe not exactly a thousand times a second, but at a tremendous rate. So that was the high pitch sound that you heard in one of those uh, audio uh, files. So again, pulsar is a neutron star with a magnetic field where we're receiving the beamed energy. There are many pulsars in this galaxy where the beam does not sweep towards the Earth and we don't detect them as pulsars. So there are other neutron stars out there, but if this lighthouse beam does not uh, get pointed towards the Earth ever, then we're not going to detect that pulsar. So. There is a change in the length of time between the pulses. That's due to the light, the electromagnetic waves, carrying away rotation energy. And then some pulsars, there's fresh material falling on the pulsar from a companion star. And as that material hits the edge of the neutron star, it uh, spins it up, makes it go faster. Uh, just as if you would push on the edge of a merry-go-round in the playground. As you continue to push on the edge, you can make the merry-go-round go faster and faster. The material falling from the companion star can speed up the uh, rotation as well. So there's another story in our uh, uh, stellar evolution regarding the neutron stars. We've still not gotten to the black holes, but that will be coming up soon. So neutron star is an object with uh, observed to be up to two times the mass of the sun. The theory on how it's produced is a white dwarf star gets to be bigger than 1.4 times the mass of the Sun, or we have in the supernova process the core shrinking down, being compressed, and ending up with over uh, 1.4 times the mass of the Sun in that core. Then that collapse continues down to a neutron star. The rotating neutron stars are the pulsars. The pulsars, we detect pulses of energy in both the radio. Uh, spectrum and in the visible light spectrum they can be detected. 
So keep reading there and uh, write down some questions. We'll uh, hopefully present your questions to your instructor. So that's where we're going to end for today. I'll have to find the control that uh, ends this uh, broadcast someplace here. So here we go. So keep reading.